Along with the coronavirus cases reaching almost 2.5 million worldwide and more than 170,000 deaths, over 200 different programs have been launched to develop vaccines and therapeutics to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. From well-known industry giants such as Gilead Sciences to Johnson & Johnson, they are engaged in a global race to find and test the products. With a vaccine likely to be out of reach for this year, the near-term hope for a means to quell the global spread of the novel coronavirus rests on finding an antiviral treatment that can improve the odds of survival for those that are stricken with COVID-19. In this video, I'm going to talk about different drugs and vaccines that can help us to fight against the coronavirus at the present or in the near future. A Chicago hospital treating severe COVID-19 patients with Gilead Sciences antiviral medicine Remdesivir in a closely watched clinical trial is seeing rapid recoveries in fever and respiratory symptoms with nearly all patients discharged in less than a week. In lab tests, Remdesivir was one of the first medicines identified as having potential to impact SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus that causes COVID-19. The entire world has been waiting for results from Gilead's clinical trials and positive results would likely lead to fast approvals by the FDA and other regulatory agencies. Also, if safe and effective, it could become the first approved treatment against the disease. The University of Chicago Medicine recruited 125 people with COVID-19 into Gilead's two phase 3 clinical trials. Of those people, 113 had severe disease. All the patients have been treated with daily infusions of remdesivir. Infectious disease professor Kathleen Mullane, who is the researcher, said that most patients had been discharged from the hospital and only two had died, which is a very good news. She also mentioned that the fever in the affected patients is seen to be reduced quite quickly. Also, the patients are able to come off the ventilators or day after starting the therapy, which in overall means that the patients are doing very well after the application of Remdesivir. She also added that most of the patients are severe and most of them are living at 6 days, so that tells that duration of therapy does not have to be 10 days and in fact, they had only 3 patients living after 10 days. Gilead's drug is one of the most watched therapies being studied for treatment of COVID-19 patients. It's conducting two trials of the drug in moderate and severe patients with the goal of enrolling 4,000 people in the trials. The Chicago results are a tiny but promising sliver of the overall trial. Almost all patients recover from the disease which has made it important to conduct tests which compare treatments against a placebo. While the trial in moderate patients contains a placebo group, Gilead's trial of severe patients does not. Gilead has said to expect results for its trial involving severe cases in April. Mullane said during her presentation that Data for the first 400 patients in this study would be locked by Gilead Thursday, meaning that results could come any day. On March 28, 2020, FDA had given emergency use authorization approval to distribute millions of doses, around 30 million doses of anti-malarial drugs chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine to hospitals across the country, saying the potential benefits outweighs the known and potential risk of such drugs. A small randomized control trial from China in which 50% of the patients with COVID-19 were treated with additional hydroxychloroquine therapy and 50% were not given hydroxychloroquine. Out of those who were receiving hydroxychloroquine, they had shown improvement in their symptoms such as decrease in fever and reduction in cough and their chest x-ray also showed improved pneumonia. Chinese researchers also noticed that none of their lupus patients who were already taking hydroxychloroquine developed COVID-19 and none of their COVID-19 patients have lupus. So this observation favors the fact that hydroxychloroquine can be taken as an effective medicine against the COVID-19. 
Medical authorities in China have said favipiravir, which is used in Japan to treat new strains of influenza, appeared to be effective in coronavirus patients. Zhang Zinmin, an official at China's Science and Technology Ministry, said favipiravir, developed by a subsidiary of Fusiflim, has produced encouraging outcomes in clinical trials in Wuhan and Shenzhen involving 340 patients. Zhang also reported that it has a high degree of safety and is clearly effective in treatment. Patients who were given the medicine in Shenzhen turned negative for the virus after a median of 4 days, compared with a median of 11 days for those who were not treated with the drug. On March 3, 2020, Anthony Fauci, director of National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, stated that it would take at least a year to a year and a half to get a COVID-19 vaccine approved for use in the United States. However, some experts say a quick approval could be risky because vaccines require a lot of testing. According to WHO, 40 vaccines for the coronaviruses are in development right now and number of labs have begun human trials. The Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation CEPI, which was co-founded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Wellcome Trust and an association of many other nations, is dedicated to the development of vaccines against emerging infectious diseases, which includes the MERS coronavirus, the recently pandemic novel coronavirus, the Nipah virus and many other. So far, it has invested nearly $30 million in several candidates developing vaccine against the novel coronavirus. The organization plans to advance the top six of these candidates into larger efficacy trials with thousands of participants. Another funding source is BARDA, Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, which is contributing hundreds of millions of dollars to two top vaccine candidates, Johnson & Johnson and Moderna. Now I'm going to briefly talk about few of these companies developing vaccines against the novel coronavirus. Moderna, in collaboration with US government. US government has actually collaborated with two companies, Johnson & Johnson and Moderna. Moderna has already started phase 1 clinical trial for vaccine. The trial is being funded by the National Institutes of Health and includes 45 young healthy volunteers who will receive different doses of the vaccine that was co-developed by the National Institutes of Health and Moderna. The vaccine consists of the lipid nanoparticles containing mRNA for the SARS coronavirus 2 spike protein and are injected into the arm. Moderna is developing similar vaccine against uh, Zika and other viruses and other companies have RNA vaccines in clinical trials as well. But to date, no vaccine of this type has been approved for use. Phase 1 clinical trial is underway in Seattle and preparation for phase 2 and 3 clinical trials will begin immediately upon successful completion. Next one is Cancino Biologics and the Academy of Military Medical Sciences from China. The Chinese biopharma firm Cancino Biologics have already gone through their phase 1 clinical trials in Wuhan, Hubei province where the coronavirus was first reported. And now they are recruiting 500 volunteers for the second phase of a clinical trial. Volunteers for the Cancino trial must be 18 to 60 years old with no history of coronavirus infection or vaccine allergy. Their vaccine consists of non-replicating adenovirus vector which carries a gene for the spike protein of novel coronavirus and is injected into the arm. The company had also produced Ebola vaccine which was approved in China in 2017. Third one is University of Oxford, United Kingdom. Researchers at the University of Oxford have commenced enrollment of healthy volunteer for a clinical trial of the COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine is based on a chimpanzee adenovirus vector carrying the gene for the SARS coronavirus to spike protein and is injected into the arm. The trial is designed to enroll up to 510 participants aged 
18 to 55 and is being conducted by the university's Jenner Institute and Oxford Vaccine Group. The team is already conducting phase 1 trial for the MERS coronavirus using the same adenovirus vector. In number 4, we have Innovio Pharmaceuticals. US Innovio Pharmaceuticals plans to test its vaccine on the volunteers at the University of Pennsylvania and at a testing center in Kansas City, Missouri. The company is enrolling up to 40 healthy adult participants and each will receive two doses of vaccine four weeks apart. It's a DNA-based vaccine. A special device will administer DNA molecules that encodes spike proteins of novel coronavirus through the skin. Phase 1 trial is underway with plans to manufacture 1 million doses of its candidate this year. Next we have University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. Now I have already made a video on them. I'll put the link in the description below. Make sure to check it out. Their method is slightly unique because they deliver the vaccine through microneedle patch on the skin. The vaccine consists of a spike protein of the novel coronavirus. They tested this vaccine in mice and the antibody response to the vaccine was enough to neutralize the virus. They expect to start clinical testing in the next few months. Lastly we have Janssen. Janssen is a pharmaceutical subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson which is in partnership with Barda. The company expects to initiate human clinical studies of its lead vaccine candidate at the latest by September 2020 and anticipates the first batches of a COVID-19 vaccine could be available for emergency use authorization in early 2021. Johnson & Johnson is also expanding the company's global manufacturing capacity which will enable the supply of more than 1 billion doses of effective vaccine globally. Their vaccine consists of non-replicating adenovirus vector carrying undisclosed genetic material of SARS-CoV-2 and is administered intranasally.